You are now listening to FemRegard Podcast with Tessa Markle and Carolina Alvarez. Mmm. Fem. Hey, Fem Fam. It's Tessa hey. and Carolina. Your um, girls, your fem girls. We have another amazing guest, as always. Um, mm-hmm. This one reached out to us, which we really love. And she let us know that she has an amazing class called Pickford West. And it is all about turning actors into writers. And by turning into, I don't mean instead of. I mean in order <laughs> to help their careers, you know? And so yeah. many actors, they want to create their own content for themselves or even just they want to start writing, you know? And this class really allows them to get started. Um, and if you are part of our newsletter, you heard about her class last month because uh, we announced it then when we had first spoken to her. And you should be a part of our newsletter if you are not because we're going to update you when her next class is. And you're going to get a coupon code, y'all. Yes, yes. Emily hooked it up today for us. Um, so make sure you head over to femregard.com and sign up for a newsletter because, yeah, she's giving us a special code to our fem fam community. So uh, really huge thanks to Emily today. And, yeah. and in this episode alone, like it's just a preview and you're going to get a lot of really helpful tools. Like it's stuff that I'm like, oh yeah, that's definitely something to think about in my writing in the future. Right. So if you are going to learn so much already just from this episode, like why wouldn't you take the class? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. No, Emily Grace really breaks it down today on um, what tools you can have and give you as an actor, a a place to get started in general, because we've been there. It's a really can be a daunting process if you didn't go to school for screenwriting specifically. And there's just, there's different ways to go about it. And I love it because she, it really resonated with my own process. And I think these are exactly like a great groundwork on how you can approach screenwriting. And Emily really goes into how it can evolve And, you know, there's there's no one way to do anything, y'all. We talk about that on the show. So I do think you're going to get some great little teaser tips. But again, for more, definitely check out Pickford West. And hope you guys enjoy this episode with Emily Grace. What are the types of classes and workshops you're offering to help um, actors? Is it just exclusively to actors, my dear? It is geared towards actors, um, but, you know, anyone, it's open to anyone who resonates with the message. Um, I just have an acting background and my all the other versions of my business before now were working with actors, so that's the bulk of, of my clientele um which is why I market it that way but you know at at some point we'll have to re revisit the marketing message but it is definitely anyone who resonates is welcome very nice and it's a lot of um common mistakes kind of I kind of um things you're trying to correct right I was just taking a peek at the notes that I had here from what you had sent us (laughs) Yes. So the mission, like the ultimate mission is to help you finally write your damn script already. Mm -hmm. That's sort of uh, (laughs) where, you know, the idea is where we're going to end up. And of course, along the way, going from idea in your head to a finished script, there are many mistakes that actors particularly fall into based on, you know, how they've been trained and where they feel like they have a skill set that maybe they're actually missing some pieces, but they don't know that. Mm -hmm. Um, So my goal is to help, again, any writer, whether you're pursuing acting or not, like get out of that overwhelm and doubt and wondering if your idea is good enough and give you the tools to take you step by step through that process. I love that because it sounds like it's like a mix of mindset and um, like 
tangible uh, tools, you know, I, I can't think of a better word for that, but <laughs> because I feel like a lot of classes are kind of just one or the other, you know, and it's like, okay, well, if I get my mindset right, which is kind of the first step, really, because you have to get out of that, like, I can't do it, it's not good enough to even do it. But then it's like, okay, well, now I, I think I can do it, but how do I do it? So it sounds like it's really a great mix of the two. Yeah. And I think, you know, going from my idea isn't good enough to my idea is good enough is about learning the tools. That's really mm. the simple fix. Like the reason that you feel like you can't is usually because you just don't know what to do. And then it feels super overwhelming. Mm. Um, and, you know, one of the things that we talk about inside the program is uh, don't create in a vacuum because that's when you get stuck in that doubt or you you just don't have the skill set. And when you're only viewing your idea from one perspective, um, mm-hmm. you just get stuck in that. Uh, mm-hmm. But Other than like this evolving concept that you will continue to like craft and grow. Yes. And just having, a, you know, not that you need to co-write with someone. Like ultimately, if you're writing it, it's usually a solo practice. But getting other eyes and ideas is a collaborative yeah. spirit. Every idea is better from that process. Absolutely. And I love that. Like, uh, yeah, we both uh, are actors first. That's what we both studied and have done the longest. Um, and I'm I'm the writer of our, our pairing here. <laughs> and yeah, it can definitely feel like, I guess... <laughs> I'm I'm one to quickly throw myself to the edge of a cliff and see how it goes. But <laughs> I <not> love it. <laughs> every, <laughs> not everyone's like that. And that doesn't mean I don't doubt myself and have imposter syndrome all the time. You know, like just, you know, speaking with other writers on this podcast and some of them did study writing exclusively and have that background and yeah, when um, we're we're developing our feature, we ha- our first feature, we have a full script now written. But even that, like, takes so much time to for me to keep making sure. All right, do I have all these beats in place? And like, am I doing this actually right? Because I don't really, really, really know. Like, I think I really know. I've d- I've done my homework, but having someone like you come in and really like break down and outline and, and give you, like you said, those tools. If, if I had something like that, I could definitely feel more, oh, okay. Like, yeah, it gives, it gives you that confidence to know, like, you are on the right path. You're doing, here's some great feedback, because all of that is so important. I, I completely agree. I've, I've got a lots of feedback and lots of <laughs> good. notes. It's been yes. fun. It's been good, though. <laughs> Absolutely. But yeah, and then you go through those times where you know, I'm texting Tess. I'm like, I cannot look at the script again, or I I'm gonna tear it up, press delete. <laughs> like I like, but and then and then you take a breathe, and you're like, wait, this is still awesome. Okay, I'm fine. I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you've heard this all, but just reiterating to our listeners what like that journey's been like for myself. Not have studied <laughs> writing and bridging that gap of all right, I can do this. I can handle something. Like, like it, it's a huge undertaking. You don't realize it sometimes at first, too. <laughs> Me. <laughs> but, but but then you're like, okay, okay, I'm in it. We're doing it. We got this. Yeah. Well, so congratulations awesome. on writing a feature. That's a huge milestone. <sighs> yeah, everyone says that. I'm like, is it, though? I need to make the goddamn movie. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. <laughs> like, well, you had to write the goddamn <laughs> script first, so. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. It just feels like I haven't, like, fully celebrated that moment. It, you know, I have, like, these wonderful reminders from my peers, but other than that, it's like, oh, yeah, yeah, I did that. We got, see, we're good. Yes. We're on the way. And, like, it's okay. <laughs> back to this mindset idea, I think that's such a classic actor thought process mm-hmm. of, like, you did this amazing thing. You don't even necessarily acknowledge it because you're looking at the next step and feeling like, but I'm so far behind from where I'm trying to go. And then, you know, that puts us as actors into this constant state of like, I'm not good enough. I'm behind schedule and it's really painful. Um, So I would absolutely encourage you to celebrate that win of having written a feature film that is a huge deal and it, it deserves to be acknowledged. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> no, 
that that completely resonates with me, like everything you're saying. And I think that's great for our listeners who are not even actors who are tuning in. A lot of them are filmmakers and they could probably feel that same stress of, yeah, like, wow. Okay. Like this is, that's that I should, I should enjoy those small step victories. They're, they're definitely important to take that time. I mean, this is a career too, in which like you never know when your next gig is going to come, no matter what area of filmmaking you're in. Right. Mm -hmm. And so you're always pushing for the next thing, no matter what. So yeah, it's sometimes it is hard to remind yourself, like, let's stop and celebrate this. This was kind of a big deal, you know, and not get swept up in always just finding the next thing. Yeah. And I think it's, you know, we're all on a journey through life whether it's our acting career or, you know, other life lessons that we're here to learn. And when you're just constantly pushing to the next result and the next result, like by the time you get to that big result that you think in your mind is going to give you the happiness or the confidence Mm -hmm. or the validation, if you're not in the habit of finding, you know, an inner joy and celebrating the small steps, when you do get the big stuff, you're still just going to feel as... Like, oh, that's it. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Oh, I got this thing and that's it. And then you're just going to be in the cycle forever. So I think it's just for joy in your life to enjoy the process is a really great habit to cultivate. Yeah. We we talk about that frequently on our show um, because I think it's the first thing we do that we don't do (laughs) is like, yeah, like Tessa said, ready for the next thing or the next project, the next script. It's like, you know, you can't just have one story, you need multiple. And yeah, of course that's like immediately what's on the back back backlog (laughs) of my brain. And it's like, yeah, you need, you, you just need to keep that fresh, but that's, that doesn't, yeah, you need to like find that time to also really enjoy that process. So I think that's really important that you focus on that. And what are, I guess, to take it back to what are some tools or, or maybe expectations that new members who join your class can, can get out of it, or just, you know, some little teasers that they can get a taste for how this process really sets them up with that mindset and to really diving in to the craft. Great. You know? Okay. Yes, so, yes, yes. So I was saying the program and we, um, just to clarify what I mean by that, because I did find yeah. out I am a direct descendant of Eleanor of Aquitaine, who was a queen of England and France. I don't mean the royal Ooh. we. <laughs> no, I, I could if I wanted. Um, <laughs> so uh, the writing tools that we share inside the program. I learned from my writing mentor who is an amazing TV writer named Olivia Cortero Briggs. And she contributed a lot of the writing tools that we share inside of the program. Um, just, you know, for that clarity, these are not things I made up out of the thin air. Um, yeah. So one of the first things that we help people focus on is character. Right. People come in thinking, is my idea good enough? Can I fill an entire script? And that's that a lot of times is the struggle that a newer writer is facing. And one of the things that I love that I learned from Olivia as her student originally was focus on crafting really compelling characters. If that is your foundation, that alone will set yourself, will set your script up for success. It will give you conflict um, and it will drive your story. And one of the things, again, because most of the people that come to us, at least right now, are actors who want to write something for themselves because they're feeling they're not getting in the rooms they want. They're not getting the auditions they want. And they're like, I have more to say and more to share. So let me just write it myself. So a lot of actors, what I'm, what I have found is they're really great at crafting character. They're not as great at crafting story. So they oftentimes Mm. will write for themselves and the protagonist is really nuanced. This like great, Uh, flawed character and then all the other characters are just these one-dimensional foils Mm. 
Mm-hmm. Or we go the opposite end. Some actors can't really view themselves through the writer's lens. So all of their other characters are these really nuanced, interesting characters. And then their protagonist, based on themselves, is sort of this passive, boring person just bumbling along through the story. Um, <laughs> oh, uh, does any of that sound familiar to your process? <laughs> <laughs> Um, no, I, I actually really love that because it does in the sense that I can't just go and write the log line. (laughs) Like everyone says that's the first step and that's like the ladder. It's in the, like, that's something you need to figure out, but I take the time of, yeah, figuring out the world kind of setting and then like the character, obviously producer brain, we're thinking budget, but, um, (laughs) I love that I do really first try to get a feel for who the characters are, the the protagonist and the antagonist. And that's how I started sync. Great. It was kind of like this like genre and then like, all right, what what are, who are these kind of characters paired with the setting? And I think when you kind of start to get a feel for all three, then I go, for me, it's actually like the beach sheet. Like, can I figure out the beginning, middle, end? Yes. And, and then, cause I was driving myself, I don't know if this is your process, but it was driving me crazy to figure out all these little, like in between moments when I'm still f- getting a feel for really who these characters are. And uh, my brain just like, it was almost too overwhelming, but when I could figure out the big pieces, I was then able to adapt yes. all the in between moments. Yes, that is exactly, I'm glad that you brought up the beginning, middle and end. Um, because that's yeah. such an important part of the process to have, mm-hmm. especially if you're writing a complete script. If you're writing a scene for yourself to do as a self tape, that's sort of its own beginning and middle, beginning, middle, and end. But if we're talking a short or a feature, where, what I used to do and what I see some newer writers doing is like, I'll just sit down and write, and my story will unfold before me like magic. I didn't understand, like, <laughs> oh no, you need to know what where this is going before you sit yeah. down and write if you want to save yourself a lot of pain um, and rewriting. And rewriting, that's right. Yeah. Um, so, <sighs> and girl, I'm all for. I do a throw up little beginning draft. Of like course. if you want to get a sense for your characters, I sometimes I will just start ha- writing just to get again more inspiration from what I feel like the characters sound, the world. But then you got to stop and like really figure out the middle and the ending cuz then it's like yeah, you're writing to nowhere. Yeah. <laughs> and I think yeah. You know, I think what you're hitting on is it, it's a messy process. <laughs> it's there's no other yeah. way to do it. Um, and you know, I think one of the things I hope that we impart to people that we work with is like, these are suggestions of, and these are tools to get you into the game and get you into a process, but everyone is going to find their own process. The more they write, there is no like, well, you're doing it wrong. Don't do it that way. Right. We're, we are all right. finding our own process, but the only way to find your own process is to start with a process. And then you say, oh, actually, that didn't resonate with me. Let me try this a little bit. Um, But so our process begins with character because I think that is something an actor can hold on to and understands. And then it helps them. So we have a tool that we share called the character square, which for me as an actor, just it was like, the light bulb moment to get Mm. me thinking like a writer instead Mm. of an actor who's really trained to focus on myself. Um, (laughs) No, that's a really good point. Yeah. Um, (laughs) Like I think my character, right. So anyway, um, (laughs) so the character square is a really simple tool that lays a foundation for your character's, you know, for their journey throughout the script, but also to design them to clash with one with one another and create conflict. I have seen that tool alone, like spark something in, in people that they're like, oh, now I know exactly what I want to write. There's just mm-hmm. something about really unlocking, not just developing characters, but developing characters to clash. That seems to be a really great uh, first step for for actors to then feel like oh I'm starting to understand how writing works yeah 
Yeah, it like makes me it makes me think about um there's this example like no one wants to watch like a couple write a scene about a couple who is just watching TV That's and right. they're getting along great <laughs> and it's like just they're it's so wonderful like blah, boring we all want to see the conflict so it's is it for you like a strategy of figuring out the characters like weaknesses and strengths and the needs that yes. of each other yes yeah, so let yeah. me tell you what's in the character square oh yes let's get into it uh so there's four essential elements four major characters and again I learned this from Olivia I didn't make this mm -hmm. up myself and uh so the first element is the external want which is the tangible goal that each character is pursuing throughout the film it should be mm -hmm. measurable uh <laughs> so something like get the love of my father isn't mm -hmm. measurable right but uh get my father to pay for my college is you know if you've received that or not. Um, ah, that's a good distinction. Yes, measurable is important. And the character is aware that this is their goal. Their, I'm sorry, want, external want. Uh, uh -huh. Then they have their superpower. This is like a quality that makes this character unique from the other characters. And it often uh, assists them in getting that external want. So if we stick with the example of like, get my father to pay for college, she might be very persuasive, right? That would be a superpower directly related to getting that goal. Mm -hmm. Want, I'm sorry. We used to call it external goal and we changed it and my morning brain wants to go <laughs> back to the old way. Um, <laughs> superpower assists you in getting the external want. Then there is the fatal flaw, which is, uh, you know, what's preventing the character from getting what they want, but it's also definitely preventing them from getting what they need, which is that inner need, which is the void within that needs to be filled. Mm -hmm. So sticking with our faux example, uh, let's say her, in, I like to start with the inner need because it helps me think of what's in the way of that. Um, so let's say her inner need is actually independence, right? She's trying to get her father to do this thing, but what, what her inner need really is, is to stand on her own two feet, to have confidence mm -hmm. or independence. Mm -hmm. And so the fatal flaw that might be blocking that is like low self-esteem or lack of confidence or self-doubt, like something in the realm of actually blocking her from having that independence. So that's like a uh -huh. very rough sketch of a mm -hmm. character. Of course, they'll have other qualities and they'll have other flaws. Right. Um, but these are sort of the main, this is like the blueprint for the beginning of a character. And then we could set up the father to clash. Let's say he's the antagonist. He might not actually be in this film, but let's say just for example, he is the antagonist, yeah. right? So his external want might be for his daughter to pay for her own college, <laughs> right? Yeah. Already those external wants are at odds. His superpower might be he's... Uh, very determined, right? He digs in his heel, maybe some stubbornness there. Uh, yeah. His inner need might be, it could be accept his, accept things as they are, right? He might be not accepting his daughter the way she is. That could be a good conflict there. And then his fatal flaw could also be self-doubt. So then they're sharing some of these qualities, but they're also set up mm. to clash, right? Their wants are, are completely yeah. at odds. The determination and the persuasion are going to bump up against each other, right? So we're, right. you know, I'm completely making this up on the fly. So we might go back and revise this and make it more fine-tuned. But that's sort of the how we would begin creating these character squares and then using that to then build our story around these two characters. Mm -hmm. I like that. So it is very much like direct opposition of the two characters. Definitely for the protagonist and antagonist. Okay. Yeah. Tessa, I'm seriously digging Jambox. The fam needs to hear about their extensive music and sound effect library. I agree. Not only do they have a huge library created by Hollywood level composers, but you can search through it all based on criteria like genre and mood. 
Plus, they even have detailed stems you can use to create your own soundtracks from the elements they provide. You can literally be your own composer. 6,000 unique tracks and tens of thousands of stems, plus over 10,000 sound effects. Carolina, that's amazing. Oh, it gets better. They even gave us a discount code for our listeners. 10% off with Fem10. Connecting filmmakers with ridiculously good music and sound effects. Go and visit jambox.io and start leveling up your sound production. Exactly. Again, that's code FEM, F-E-M-M-E, 10 at jambox.io. But yes, you always want to look for, even if it's like an, a protagonist and an ally, for example, mm-hmm. they still need some ways to clash. Otherwise, it's just a yes person and who yeah. cares, right? That sort of falls into that trap of like a one-dimensional character that's written to make the protagonist look good, mm-hmm. uh, which we, mm-hmm. you know, this these other characters should be three-dimensional in their own right, even if we don't explore deeply into their stories. But, you know, there should always be some sort of potential for conflict, even when the characters are on each other's side. Yeah. That's a really good point. Because, yeah, you can, their, their intentions could be different with what they want, if they want the same thing. You know, things like that can be motivating them in different ways. And that's always like that's how you end up writing really good subtext or like, I feel like all these other more internal, like the internal versus the external varying, um, like with the story itself, like what's like kind of more of this emotional journey versus the the physical journey that the characters go on. And that's something I always had to like, kind of remind myself. I'm like, okay, what is, I, I'm forgetting the better term of this, but like, going back to what's the emotional also journey that that they're finding in this story, that that's where it usually ends up clashing too between the two main characters. Yes, and I have a like a, an example that came to mind. We did an analysis of Dead to Me. Have you, have you seen that? Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Um, I haven't seen the second season, but I saw okay. the first one. We only talked through the Loved pilot, it. just how they established those two characters. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I didn't, I didn't write it, so I might be wrong. Um, But like in the analysis there, they seem to be set up as allies um, with Jen sort of being the ultimate protagonist. And even though the other character is a lead, she's not a true protagonist. They're sort of set up to be allies Mm -hmm. who love each other. They're deeply, they're like building a very deep friendship, but they are completely at odds with their wants right? <laughs> like yeah, right. <laughs> completely yes. at odds. And there's this big secret, which of course is another great narrative tool <laughs> between them. And we're sort of waiting to know when is it going to come out, but that come out. that's a great example yeah. of, uh, you know, one is very slick professional. She's that real estate agent. The other one is this very artsy, like free spirit. So just in the design of these characters, they're already so juxtaposed. Even though they're written as allies, there's a lot of clash that comes between them. Mm-hmm. And the way they like handle grief too. Yes. It's like they're both handling grief, but you can see the contrast differences Absolutely. in the way they're like dealing with, with death. <laughs> yes. And guilt, right? They're both carrying a secret and they're both carrying yeah, guilt and they don't know true. it about the other one. And it comes out in like episode nine and that leads to the shocking finale. And <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah, and yes. Great- Which is a great suspense tool is like to kind of let the audience know. I can't remember. Do they let us know in the pilot about um, the one of the yes. girl- woman's secret? Yeah, it's, right. And it's that... the very last scene of the pilot, if I remember correctly, which is, you know, sort yeah. of kicks us into the rest of the season. Yeah. Yeah. And that's a great way to kind of keep us like engaged and wanting to see, all right, when's this big that's secret right. coming out? <laughs> and it yeah. changes. So I you love know, it's, that. It's such a great reveal because it changes how you viewed the entire way. Uh, I can't remember her name, Linda Cardellini's character approaches mm-hmm. that friendship. All of a sudden right. you're like, oh, this is not what I thought. It's it's a great, it's such a great pilot. Yeah. Yeah. It's very well done. Yeah. Yeah. 
I excellent love show, example. listeners, by the way, if you haven't seen it. <laughs> highly Such recommend. Show, yeah. <laughs> um, and I want to take it back a little bit to um, <clears throat> when talking about actors writing kind of for themselves, a lot of times, you know, we're writing ourselves as the protagonist, right? Makes sense to do. Um, so one of the things that you had addressed when you had kind of sent us what your class address is, one of like the bullet points essentially was the trap of writing from personal experience. Yes. So I'd love to hear a little more about that. Oh, Ooh. good one, Ooh. Tessa. Ooh, <laughs> Tessa. Coming in hot this morning. <laughs> Coffee's kicking in. <laughs> I know. I love that. My been so we got, got a little more to go. Okay. Yes. So this is a great question because... Most actors, if they do write, of course it will be inspired by their personal experience, right? We are vessels for feelings and we want to put those feelings somewhere. We want to make our experiences have meaning. And yes, so uh, let's talk about the trap. There's a couple traps of writing from personal experience. So the first one is something we touched on earlier, which is either the protagonist based on themselves is really compelling and then everyone else is a one-dimensional foil um, because uh, you know it's my story and I want to share what I went through and it becomes very self-focused and it misses these other compelling characters to move the story along Um, or the opposite of that which is all the other characters are really compelling and then the protagonist is just sort of passively experiencing this thing because that's usually how it happened in real life. Uh, So, you know, the pilot that I was writing when I originally met Olivia in her class was very personal and my protagonist was completely passive, just sort of falling into these experiences and she was like, well, you can't write it that way. Like this character needs to be driving the story. And I was like, but that's how it really happened. It's like, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. No one (laughs) wants to watch someone passive. Um, Right. That's a good point. And then the other trap that I see people falling in writing for personal experience is that it starts to become like a a diary entry. So it's very strictly adhering to what happened the way it happened. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times, especially if it's something, you know, that was a traumatic experience, it's something in a more dramatic context, we want to be authentic to what actually happened but generally the way things actually happen don't make a great film or tv show they need to be at some point you need to zoom out and and stop writing this as your story and create a character that is separate from you that is going on a narrative journey that has act one an inciting incident and escalating conflict and a climax right it can't just be well this happened and then that happened and then that happened and then the end Mm -hmm. it has to be like this happened which caused this thing to happen which then escalated this conflict you know it needs to be within the realm of a story structure not that you can't break rules and you know there are some amazing films uh the lost daughter if you've seen that Oh, amazing, right? Amazing. Not a tra- not a traditional structure, but so well done. But yeah. in order to to break the rules, you have to understand what the rule is that you're breaking. Um, so that's amen, sis. That was gonna be. I was gonna throw that in there um, because when you were when we were talking about like okay, like how do we even go about um, learning kind of how to following a guideline you have to like in order to figure out what works for you you need to follow something Mm -hmm. same thing with story structure if you want to break the rules you have to know them in order to kind of play around so I and I I think the advice I I remember reading out from a book was just like um you know start if it's your first thing just try to do it in the most traditional sense so you at least have a, a feel for what you know a traditional, like I said, all those things, inciting incident, all those things. So you know what those are. So for your next one, you can then like be more artsy and, <laughs> and play yes. with it more. Agree. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like so just need to throw that in there. there I, I don't think there are any true rules. I think it, any great screenwriter can break any rule that they want if, if their story supports that. So, you know, I think at the end of the day, there are, 
there are no true rules. It's a it's a fine line, right? Because we always say like, well, why are you the one to write this story? It's because you understand this experience, you know, whether you've personally been through it or it's just something that's applicable to your life. Like most stories are going to come from some personal space, right? But like you're saying, it's you you have to then be able to separate yourself from it or else, yeah, you're going to fall into these traps. So I think that's very important to note too is like, it is a it is a fine line and it's it's a danger that you know you can write your own story but you've got to be careful with how you're doing it you've got to make it a compelling story with compelling characters yes. that makes sense and isn't just listing what really happened in real life yes and then it sort of becomes like a filmed diary entry which mm-hmm. as the person that went through it can feel very cathartic <laughs> but as the person watching it 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 won't be compelling Um, And it won't draw people in. And I think Mm -hmm. ultimately, you know, we want to express these personal stories because they had meaning and value to us. And the whole point of creation, uh, storytelling is to connect and make an impact for the viewer to have an experience. So you, if that is your goal, you have to create a story that the viewer is going to respond to in a way that they understand Mm-hmm. yeah that's that that makes sense convey it in the way that the viewer will understand <laughs> am I hearing that right yes, yeah no, it... sometimes I have to like take it back <laughs> to like break it down but um I think the way I, I I've navigated it is like all right if I kind of feel like there's there, if, as a what I've written so far, I noticed there's a theme I'm always drawn to, which is control. Like that's a theme that my care, my protagonist always struggles with typically. Yes, um, I understand what you're Does saying. it sound familiar? <laughs> <laughs> and, and I recognize that. And now I find a way to still cathartically write my personal experiences, but just off of those themes. And then I find you know, moments of the dialogue where I'm like, yeah, that was a very real like moment that was said and had to me, but the circumstances are completely different. Yeah. Um, so I find, I feel like when you start to kind of find your voice and what is like coming out of you, um, this of course comes from writing a lot <laughs> and like doing these things. Um, you'll like, okay, this is like, yeah, this is what it keeps coming out of me. And like, I I then can find really because this is another cool thing about writing from personal experiences is when you can get really specific with something that's like seemingly weird (laughs) it it can be what's unique and what's you know different and that's your story yeah it's then those like unique things those are just like little glimmers right that's again not writing specifically this is what happened to me but here's like this really unique piece that maybe I can incorporate that can you know, make it personal and unique, but not again, like this retelling, this diary entry of what happened. Yeah. Yeah. I think too, whenever you have, um, experience like that you're writing from personal experience, but you're allowing it to be a little less specific to what really happened to you. Like you'll find that people respond to it really well. And even if you think it's like a weird, you know, thing, it's like, like I think of, for instance, the show Pen15. I don't know if you That's guys have watched that. That's what I was that. just thinking of. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> they they had said, like, they wrote these things and they're like, well, we think it's really funny, but like, <laughs> are other people going to understand this? Are they going to relate to this? And then they realized, like, we're all sitting here going, oh my God, I didn't know other people did that too, yeah. you know? Yes. So, yeah. And I, I love that you brought up Pen15 because I think they're some of the best content that has come out over the past few years was written by actors. And it was based, you know, it was inspired Mm. by real experience that's then put into a great structure that takes us on this journey. Mm. Um, I love the example of Pen15. I love the example of Fleabag, Mm -hmm. which I think a lot of people know was a one-woman show at the Edinburgh Fringe Festival. But before that, it actually started as a 10-minute piece she wrote for Mm. a storytelling show. And her her into that character was that she was feeling a lot of rage as a woman and was like, what if I just talk the way I talk to my girlfriend about how I'm feeling? And that rage was sort of the impetus for this show that so many people resonated with uh, in such a deep way. 
Yeah. But that, you know, what I love about that story is because we, uh, hearkening back to what we were talking about before, like always feeling like I'm so far from the goal. I'm so far from the goal. She didn't set out to write a two season TV show. That was not the goal. The first step was I'm going to write this 10 minute piece. That Mm -hmm. was the first step. And from there, she really hit on a character that was compelling for her as an actor, for things she wasn't being seen for, and that the next step then turned into this one-woman solo show, which resonated so much that she, then she got an offer to write a TV show. But like it started with a much smaller step. And right. I think the most important part that I take away from that story is she got started. She got started yeah. with something. Yeah. And she built upon it. You know, she got started with the character That's and right. then, you know, built on the story. Yeah. 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 That um, that to me almost sounds like a great way. And I'm terrible at this. I, I, I'm terrible at outlining. I'm just going to say it. Many <laughs> actors, I mean, writers would probably be like, <gasps> pause for dramatic <laughs> blasphemy. <laughs> Because I've met writer friends who will literally write an outline novel or literally just write a novel. Like, <laughs> and that's great. That's actually a great way of getting started again. And then that's why I'm bringing it up. So there's different ways to get started. And I think as an actor, that sounds exciting to write like a monologue or like, yeah, a scene, you know, one like scene. a scene, yeah. one scene. And then it gets you writing versus, oh my God, I have to write this serious outline that exactly. I've not done before. And I don't know how to get started because it seems dumb and a very detailed and I don't even know <laughs> but if you start from this place I really feel like that could that resonates with at least me and yeah. like probably other mm-hmm. actors especially yeah I have been finding you know inside our program you start with a short film but I have been finding even that sometimes feels like a little too daunting for an actor who's like but it's pilot season I have all these auditions and just that sort of chaotic life schedule Mm -hmm. um so my friend who's an acting audition coach and I were sort of talking actually we're just having a happy hour to to catch up on zoom um Mm -hmm. but we both are workhorses and love to work so of course we were like what if we made a class so we actually came up with a class that does exactly what you're talking about it's you create two characters and then you write a scene and then you use that as your self-tape and then you use that self-tape to put yourself on the map for the kind of roles that you want to be playing and that you want to be known for that you might not be getting seen for. So we had to, you know, make it even smaller than a 10 minute project. It's like, okay, I can start with just one scene. I can absolutely do that. And then it's exciting because it's a character that you know you want to play, but it takes that Mm -hmm. pressure off of all of the steps to get from an idea to a finished script and then how do you produce it and it just becomes very overwhelming so we're trying to refine it even to a more tiny step that is absolutely tangible and relevant for what actors need on their day-to-day basis yeah I think that's really smart I think yeah it allows it allows the actor as a writer to start small and to learn you know their voice and how they even want to approach this and then it also benefits the actor as an actor (laughs) because then they have this footage already that you know you're not trying to produce a short film that you need to find the money for blah 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 yeah I wish it had been my idea was my friend's idea but (laughs) (laughs) but you're putting it into action that's right I'm the implementer (laughs) yes just as important just as important yeah um I love that though because I was gonna bring up the how we've heard too on the show how many people start with a short film and then they are able to turn it into a feature or get asked to make it into a TV show. So that is a great smaller project, I think, to, to start when you're first starting out. But like to your point, I love that you bring up like that can even be a lot when you're first starting. So to have this is so great. Also, the amount of actor monologues I try to find on my own for myself. Yes. Can we just have a moment? Like, <laughs> not good. Yes. <laughs> not great. <laughs> So, and, and then you always feel we like me personally in the past, I don't know, Tessa, you could probably speak to this more. Like, I feel weird about like borrowing from something too relevant on TV that we've all oh, yeah. seen, like that's already been portrayed. So it's like, what do we do? Like, I don't have a monologue. Uh, and so like, I don't know, Tessa, you want to piggyback on that? But I was just... yeah, well, I mean, as actors, it's like, 
especially like if you go to school for theater or whatever, you're taught these same shows, these same plays, yes. these same monologues, and then you <laughs> yes. go out into the real yes. world and nobody wants to hear them. That's you know, right. they've heard it a million times. <laughs> Even if it isn't, you know, the like most classic that everybody hears that even like everyone knows is cliche it still might be something that was hot the pre- previous year so they've still heard it a bunch of times and they yes. like you what you've done or what you're doing has already been done you know um and then it's like when you're building your reel for instance if you don't really have material to put on it you have to create your own because you can't just do a scene from you know the notebook that everybody already knows all the words to like Right. Yeah. So it's a and lot it, of that. Yeah. And then you're setting yourself up to be compared to the professional level production that had millions of dollars and like A-list actors and on-set coaches and personal trainers and nutrition. You know, just you're putting yourself at a level that you actually don't have the resources to compete with, which yeah. then puts you at a disadvantage. And the last thing yeah. that you want is for casting's eyes to glaze over when they're watching your tape right that we don't want that um be like oh yeah okay this is it. Just not even <laughs> right you it's know, doing yeah. you a disservice and then I think what uh you know what actors can fall into as well is you know you get you book a couple co-stars and then you sort of get into the catch-22 of like my footage is only co-stars. I'm only being seen as a co-star. I can book more co-stars, but I want to break into something bigger, but casting doesn't feel comfortable with me at that level yet because all they see are Mm -hmm. co-stars. So it's another way of you to really create something that you want to be seen as in a, in a more of a leading type role or a guest star, just a bigger role than the two line (laughs) co-star. And again, it's like, if you can learn how to write for yourself, it just empowers you in a way that finding material from another project that wasn't based on your strengths just can't give you, right? It gives you this empowerment to say, here's how you should cast me and here's what I'm good at and here's what I want to focus on now. Like, stop sending me out for drama. I belong in comedy and let me show you what I can do. And no one knows your acting strengths like you do right? Like no one, you can hire someone or get a friend to write for you. You can get someone else to write for you, but it's, it's not the same as if you can really master the art of writing for yourself. It's just going to be like, can you imagine anyone else playing those characters in pen 15? No, right. right? It's their character. It's for them. That is who they were born to play those roles. Um, so it puts you into that category of like, oh my God, I can't see anyone else in this role. Like, of course you can. This is me. This is what I have to offer. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right, right, right. <laughs> right, right. No, it's just, it's so true. I mean, I'm thinking of other shows I love, like Insecure, like Issa Rae, like that's just another one. Which started mm-hmm. out like, as a web series, by the yeah, way. Yep. Right. Yeah, we had Sujata Day come on our, our podcast. Oh, great. She was there since I mean, those yes. days. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. What I love about Issa Rae, I mean, just, you know, she is such a, she's such a great uh, example of what happens when you create your own content, but she yeah. has made such, uh, such an effort to open the doors for other people to come up behind her and to come up with her and to really mm-hmm. invest in bringing diversity on screen, behind the camera, in the production companies. Like I, I just, she's such a great example of, of yeah, pioneering the changes that she wants to see. Yeah. Agreed. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. That's why I was just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause I was thinking about her and it's just, it's, it's amazing. And it's, it's, it's really, you know, gives us like hope, you know, this, this works, this can happen, yeah, yeah. you know? Yeah. Well, it's, it's been such a pleasure. And, you know, I think the answer to that question is like, can I even do this? Yes, you can do it when you are in an environment that combines the right tools with the right feedback and, and community, right? Like trying to sit at yeah. home alone and figure out how to write. I don't recommend that. You can, but I don't recommend it. It's very painful. It takes a long time. Uh, but seek out communities that not only can support you with accountability, but also share tools that will make writing 
more, more tangible and more doable for you. Yeah. I think that's very smart. Yeah. And it's, you know, everybody works differently, of course, but as a person who like, I'm like, I just got to do it myself. Like nobody's, if I want it done right, do it myself kind of thing, you know, and I, I have trouble asking for help, but a community like this, I feel like it's, you're not just going to them for help. You're going to them to build you up from the beginning, you know, and I think that's, that's so important and it's just going to make it easier for you in the end. Like you don't, you don't have to take on everything yourself. You don't have to make it more difficult. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and I, you know, I resonate with that, Tessa. I find it very hard to ask for help as well. Um, and one of the things that I make a point to do inside of the programs is like, it's very hard for me to ask for help, but here's what I need help with. So when mm. you're around someone who is modeling that through their own yeah. discomfort, yeah. it gives you that permission to like, oh, I can ask for help too, and it's okay. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Why is it so hard? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Um, well, on that note, though, I would love for our listeners to um, hear about, like, where can they find your class? How can they be a part of it? And then also anything personal that you want to plug, any social media, oh. website, all of that. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, so the best way to to find me is uh, writeyourdreamroll.com. That is a website where we, it takes you through the character square process from start to finish. We analyze the protagonist and antagonist of Devil Wears Prada. So you see in real time how you can develop your character squares. Um, And it's much more comprehensive than, you know, the few minutes we we rushed through it. So Mm -hmm. writeyourdreamroll.com is a great free resource and it's a great way to get started on developing those compelling characters. Um, and then my Instagram is the only Emily Grace. <laughs> Love it. So apparently there are a lot of Emily Graces on <laughs> Instagram. Uh, but I am the only Emily Grace. And, uh, you know, I am go in waves when I'm really active there or not active. Um, but when I am active, it's a lot of tools about writing and inspiration and success stories that we've had. And I love to talk about some of the women that have come up today, Fleabag, Issa Rae, the Pen15 team, you know, just people that I find really inspiring who are creating amazing content based on either roles for themselves or personal experience. So those are the the best ways to contact me. Perfect. Yeah, I love it. And Emily, for the programs, is it like a quarterly thing that you do all year round um, specific to like the programs we were discussing? It's a great question. <laughs> or yeah. in a, Just so our listeners know when they can sign yes, up. Yes. Like, so the, um, the new course that we just came up with uh, is Write Your Dream Scene. I think that's the URL to writeyourdreamscene.com. Um, it's a test. It's starting May 11th. I don't know when this is uh, published. But uh, we're testing it out. If it is successful, we'll probably do it again later this year. Um, Right now, I'm in a bit of a rethinking how I offer the other program. Part of what we touched on is that it can, I think it just feels too overwhelming to people. It's really comprehensive with self production and post production, and uh, it's very comprehensive. Mm -hmm. And I think. I'm considering breaking it into individual courses that will be delivered on a schedule, which I have never done before, but I think people are going to resonate with that more. Otherwise they just feel like this is an endless thing and I'm, it's too much for me. Um, so I, you know, all at once. I like that. Yeah. So right now I'm in the middle of figuring out what that might look like in the future. So the, the best way, uh, to, to get started would be write your dream scene, which is that new course. Yeah, for our listeners, um, if you guys are part of our newsletter, we had talked about this, um, was that last month, right? It was last yes. month that okay. we, we released one another, yeah. Yeah, um, so workshop. if you're not, yes, for Emily's workshop last month, and if you're not part of our newsletter, uh, please go to our website, yeah, femmaguard.com, and subscribe. Get on their newsletter. Because, <laughs> yeah, exactly, because then you get to hear cool updates, like when Emily's offering her classes. So, yeah. These are tips we all need in our life. <laughs> yes actor, writer, and all. Thanks for listening to FemRegard Podcast. 
If you like what you hear, tune in every Friday for more tips on the filmmaking business and insightful conversations with industry professionals. We can only grow with your support, so please subscribe, share, rate, and review. You can also join the FemFam on Patreon. For more on us, check us out at femregard.com. You're listening to the Geekscape Network.